we're going to focus then on this molecular landscape, which David created several years ago. And he created it um, in order to tell the story of how influenza virus infects us. And as I think we've mentioned before, there's a lot of similarities between influenza virus. That would be this virus here with the hemagglutinin protein on the outside and the coronavirus, which is also an enveloped virus with spike proteins. So this is a virus particle. This is a cross-section through an influenza virus. And the purple proteins on the surface of an influenza virus is the hemagglutinin protein. And this is the, the cell. Now this blue, blue field up here is the cytoplasm of the cell that the influenza virus is trying to infect. So you can see that the, the hemagglutinin protein has bound to its receptor on the surface of that cell. Let's stop and consider what's happening right here then. We've got this viral RNA here inside this viral membrane. And if we can deliver this RNA into the cytoplasm of this cell, we're going to consider that as infection has happened. Okay, but so the question then is how do you get this RNA across this membrane, the viral membrane, and this cell membrane so that this RNA is delivered into the cytoplasm of the cell it's trying to infect. So you might think that something magic happens and you know we could simplify this and just say yes as a result of this interaction between these two proteins the RNA is delivered. That'd be easy to say and it's not very interesting Science is fascinating when you consider the molecular mechanisms whereby these things happen. So I'm going I'm to try to explain that in a series of three panels here. The key to this is to recognize that as a result of this interaction between something outside of the cell and one of its proteins in its cell membrane, it's going to trigger what is called receptor-mediated endocytosis. It's a great phrase you should all practice saying. Use it in a conversation three times today and you'll be able to use it for the rest of your life. Bring it up with your parents during dinner conversation. They'll be very impressed. And they'll know that some learning is happening during this social distancing time. All right, receptor-mediated endocytosis. What is that? Well, the cell actually actively engulfs this thing that's bothering it on the outside. So how does that happen? Well, there's a protein inside this cytosplasm called clathrin. And here's one subunit of clathrin. You see it has this three, three legs, uh, I think has been referred to as a triskelion type shape. And these individual clathrin subunits assemble spontaneously into this geodesic dome-like structure that, that mechanically pulls a little piece of membrane uh, into the cell. And in this case, it's pulling the, the virus into the cell. And it's going to create a little bubble of membrane inside the cytoplasm, which we're going to call an endosome. So receptor-mediated endocytosis has now happened creating an endosome that contains the virus particle. So in this panel, we're looking at the virus particle here inside an endosome. This is still the cytoplasm here where we're trying to deliver this RNA across this viral membrane and this cellular membrane to complete the infection cycle. So now, here's, here's, the, real, here's the real conundrum. So remember, this is, a, this is a model of the hemagglutinin protein that has docked the virus onto the, the cell surface. So the very thing that has now docked the virus, this, this end is embedded in the viral membrane. So you have to imagine that the viral genome, the RNA, is behind this membrane. And the receptor binding domain is here. So it's recognized the receptor on the surface of the cell membrane. So the very protein that has docked the virus onto this membrane is now an impediment to the further merging of these two membranes 
which will create a hole which will let the, the virus move into the cytoplasm behind this membrane. So somehow this protein that initially brought the virus to the cell has to get out of the way so these two membranes can approach closer together. Hi there, Mark here, a colleague of Dr. Tim Hermans. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other coronavirus resources available at www.3dmoleculardesigns.com slash scienceofcoronaviruses.htm, including a paper modeling activity where you can create your own physical model of a coronavirus. We hope you enjoy, and thanks.